It is officially the longest lasting home console from Nintendo. It's crazy. How many days has it been since the Switch launched? It has been exactly at the recording of this podcast, 2,690 days since the Switch launched. Now that is big because the Famicom, or for us American plebeians, uh, was previously Nintendo's longest lasting home console at 2,686 days. A feeble number, if I do yeah. say so myself. I want to point out, you said the Famicom for our for us feeble Americans. Didn't tell us what it was actually called in America, which is the <laughs> Super Nintendo. But you know what? Uh, no, the, you were on a roll, though. You were cooking. You, it just, was, you just left out an ingredient. And then even when you corrected me, you told them wrong, because it's the original oh, the, Nintendo, no, not the oh, Super no. Nintendo. <laughs> God, y'all. Okay, sorry. Now you tell me who's got egg on their face. Yeah. Sorry, guys. The NES. Yeah. The Nintendo <sighs> Entertainment well, System. Well, I'll tell you, it's confusing because you got the the Famicom and then the Super Famicom. So, yeah. like, the and NES, we have the Super Nintendo NES. And the Super Nintendo. Yeah. It's the, you know, confusing names. That's why back in the day when you wanted a Super Nintendo, your mom would say, well, you already got a Nintendo at home. You say, but this is the Super Nintendo. Yeah. They should have called it Super Duper. Then moms would have got yeah, it. Yeah, they would have got it if they had add the Duper in there. The Super Duper Famicom. So, technically, Nintendo does have a handheld console, the Game Boy, that you could you could argue has lasted longer than the Switch is currently. Yeah. But people argue that that's not exactly true because that involves the Game Boy Color. Yeah, so the Game Boy, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the beloved brick that survives bombings, um, lasted for 4,352 days. It's a long time. Before the Game Boy Advance came out, I kind of I flirted with the idea of going in and doing and finding the dates and fi- getting the number on the Game Boy Color. Game Boy, I didn't. No, Game Boy Color was very short lived. Yeah, but when did it come out after the Game Boy? I wanted to know how long yeah. did the Game Boy really make it until the Game Boy Color. Still, that would have been a really good statistic to have. We don't have it. No, we don't have it. But also, Nintendo considers the Game Boy Color to be part of the Game Boy line. Uh, that's where people they argue do. and they say no, it's not because the Game Boy Color had exclusive games that were only to it it did and so it felt more like a next gen system Mm -hmm. they don't count that way they treat it more like it's the new 3ds or Mm -hmm. like i don't know what other kind of pro system have we had the the dsi well the new 3ds did have some games too it had about three games yeah and the dsi had some games that were also exclusive to it so they've done this in the past, and they they count them all together. But the Game Boy Color got significantly more exclusive games. That's why people argue yeah. that it was a next gen console. That's kind of how, where I fall. I, I I don't think that they should count it all as the same. Well, I really don't, yeah. because there's so many games that like you have to either have to play on the Game Boy Color or at least you know get like increased. So the ones oomph. that are the ones that get the increased oomph, I don't think those count. But the ones that are exclusive to the color, like mm-hmm. like Pokemon, what is it? Uh, Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. Like those games, Wario Land 4, mm-hmm. like those games, I do feel like, you know, they couldn't be played on a Game Boy at all. Right. So, I don't know. There's an argument to be made both ways, for sure. But yeah. anyways, today we're really focusing on the Nintendo Switch because for sure, at least if you're counting home consoles, the Switch is now the longest lived. Yeah, but even it's, is it really even a home console? Because I can take that some bitch out of my house. Yeah, and that's another argument I've heard people say is that the Switch shouldn't be considered a home console because really it's just a dockable handheld console. And, you know, in order to be a home console, I would argue you probably need to be able to run genuine AAA titles. <laughs> we're, we're reopening that can of worms, are we? For those of you who didn't see last week, that was a, a running bit last week. Uh, I actually don't believe that. I love the Switch. I just like to make Randy mad. Okay. Yeah, Back okay. to the regularly scheduled programming. So, um, you know, obviously the Switch has been out for a very long time. And mm-hmm. we were interested to find out when you guys got your Nintendo Switches, if you got them at all. Yeah. Um, so we put out a poll asking when you got your Nintendo Switch. Yeah, uh, we got ours pretty dang early, but, um, you know, when did y'all get yours? So, 2017 to 2019 is when about 52% of y'all got your Switches. That would be a very early adopter. Uh, 2020 to 2022, 19% of you. Uh, 2023 to 2024, only 6% of y'all. And 23% of y'all don't have a Switch. So, you can see a clear tapering off of the numbers as the years go by. Now, we got ours... I got mine in 2017. I think you got yours in 2018. Uh, yeah, I might have been in 2018. Um, still, we were fairly early to the uh, Switch. Mm-hmm. In in that initial kind of launch timing, or at least the first year, for sure. 
And, uh, you know, we've had the Switch for a very long time. And mm-hmm. because of that, we have many memories tied to it. Played many, many a game on, on the old console. And some big games. You know? And some genuine triple A's. Not I just mini games. Oh. Big games. Not just mini games. Although the cartridges are quite many. They are. Mm-hmm. And Randy has many of them. I have many, many cartridges. Mm-hmm. Randy has a lot of a lot of physical Switch games. I do. I love them. I think they're so cool. If you go over to his house, he'll like go into he'll disappear into his office and he'll come back with this little flip open case and he'll he'll put it in your face and be like, Look at all these cartridges. <laughs> I, it's you know, very reminiscent of uh, the movie Spring Breakers. You ever seen that movie? No. There's a there's a scene when I don't remember who the actor is. I should remember, but I don't. Anyway, he has like all his money and stuff like sprawled uh, like sprawled out on the bed, mm-hmm. and he keeps saying, "Look all my crap! Look all my crap! Look <laughs> that, all my crap!" That's, that's like he, Randy with Switch games. You walk in and he's like, "Look at all my Switch." It's, it's speaking of you know like I that's something I've been doing the entire time I've had the Switch is I keep the cartridges in. <clears throat> like a, I keep them separate from the cases. I do save the cases. I keep them on the shelf, but I keep yeah. the cartridges separate. And I first started with one of those little ones that you buy that only holds maybe like sixteen. I have one of those. Uh, maybe it holds more than six. No, it's probably around sixteen. Maybe maybe eighteen. Mm-hmm. But around there, I grew out of those. So I got another. Got yep. through two of those, and I was like, you know what? I want to get one that holds them all. So I got this big giant thing that holds all these switch cartridges. Mm-hmm. Recently, I've been thinking about going back to just putting them in their cases. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I started keeping them all together. I think it was when I traveled. It was nice to like take them with yes, me. Yes, I think that's what that was. But I don't know that I've ever needed to travel and take all my Switch games. Really, yeah. I found now when I travel, I take one of those small ones and I just pack you know, a handful of games. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I have one of the small cases. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty positive I have more games than it would hold. But I keep a fair amount of them in my Switch case. Mm-hmm. That does travel because mm-hmm. I pretty much any time I if I'm if I'm going out of the house and I actually have a backpack with me, I always either have the Steam Deck or the Switch. Usually the Steam Deck, but if I have the Switch, I've got it in a case and it's got games in it. So it's not my whole library, but it's you know any games I would want to play at that moment. That's kind of how I do it. But you don't ever leave the house, so for you it's like. Mm-hmm. Should yeah. you just put them in the case? Should you? I, I mean, I'm thinking about going back and just putting them in their cases. But it's cool to open that thing up and look it at it. It is cool. It is cool. And so we're going to settle this right now. Okay. Okay. Here's what's going to happen, Randy. You're going to keep doing what you're doing. You mm-hmm. want to know why? Mm-hmm. Because it's it's cool to open them up and look at them. Mm-hmm. And it's cool to look at them on the shelf. But you can already look at them on the shelf. If you put the cartridges back in those cases, your shelf doesn't look any better. No. But that empty case looks a hell of a lot worse. True. True. Glad we settled that. <laughs> well, going back to <laughs> memories about the Switch and when people got their Nintendo Switches, we're going to start things off with a comment. This one is from Scared Emerald. Sacred. Sa- sacred, not scared. This <laughs> this emerald is not scared. It turns out emeralds don't have emotions. But they do have value. But they do have value. They can be sacred. Sacred Emerald 70 says, I don't remember which day it was when I got my gray box Nintendo Switch, but I know it was somewhere... Like the first year when it came out, it was either on my birthday in October or after Christmas, after receiving Christmas money for the first game I got was Mario Kart 8. A couple of years, I upgraded to the Switch OLED, seven months after release, after almost six years of having two Switch. It's an amazing console. Maybe it was supposed to be the Switch. Yeah, I think. Um, It got me introduced to many new franchises like Xenoblade Chronicles, The Legend of Zelda, Bayonetta, Metroid, and Shin Megami Tensei, and etc. Yeah, so I included this comment because uh, this this young person, I'm assuming you're you're a young person, uh, just reminded me of myself, Mm -hmm. and I just loved it. Like when when you used the phrase receiving Christmas money Mm -hmm. and talked about buying a video game, I was like transported back to the freaking 90s. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to pick this comment. I just thought it was so wholesome. Oh, yeah, totally. And it's like saying, like, I love that the Switch and that has been such an introduction point to many legendary Nintendo franchises Mm -hmm. because virtually every single of Nintendo's franchises are represented in, at least in some way on the Switch. Yeah. With some exceptions, and you probably have one in mind. I don't know. Maybe. I'm just laughing about Donkey Kong. Okay. Well, we, like, we've gotten Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, which yeah. is a port, but it's there. It's represented in some way. And we're getting a second and we're installment. And we're getting another uh, Don- return. What is it? Donkey Kong Country Returns. Mm-hmm. HD. Return to Dreamland. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, but 
it has been the introduction to many people. I like this Legend of Zelda. First time many play people played Legend of Zelda was uh, Breath of the Wild, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I the Switch kind of brought. I mean, I wasn't completely out, but I, I was. I had a foot out of gaming. You know, at the me time. too, me too, for and, sure. Um, the Switch kind of brought us back, and mm-hmm. I and I think I've heard that from a lot of people, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, I, I just love that. It brought people not only back to gaming, it might have made them gamers t- for the first time. Mm-hmm. And then they get to play all these great, you know, franchises like Zelda and Metroid and Bayonetta and mm-hmm. not Donkey Kong. But that's okay. Indirectly, <laughs> the Switch kind of made us big Metroid fans. Like yes. I played Metroid as a child, was very, very bad at it. So I never really enjoyed it very much. And I had played a little Metroid Prime as a child and I, it was way too heady for me. All right. But... You know, the Switch kind of got us back because when Metroid Dread got announced, we're like, let's go back and play all the 2D Metroids leading up to it. And then we were super excited about it. Mm -hmm. Metroid Prime, the first time I had ever played Metroid Prime was on the Switch. Yep. First time I ever finished it was on the Switch. I mean, the Switch has been so great. Another, uh, this comment also brought up Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. I had never played a Bayonetta game, and I played all three Bayonetta games on the Switch it's fantastic. I love Bayonetta. Mm-hmm. And I never would have played... I would have never even thought about playing Bayonetta if it wasn't for the Switch. Right. And you know, you've always said you're going to try Xenoblade. I'm still waiting I, on that. I, 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 I'm tempted. And it's because of these same reasons. It's like, I don't know. It's The Switch just does something to it. It makes me want to try stuff. I mm-hmm. like that about it. Uh, yeah. I agree. It's very accessible. It's, mm-hmm. uh, that's a good point. It makes you want to try stuff. Really when something's does. on Switch, I do give it like a second look. You know, It really, it really is. All right, let's read our next comment. We got one from Mew. Hit us with Mew. All right, so... Uh, Mew 2. Yeah, Mew 2, you know, in the middle of this mewing session said, I bought one in 2017 and sold it in 2018. I bought a second one in 2018 and gave it to someone in 2022 and replaced it with a Switch OLED. I ended up selling that in 2023 and getting a Switch Lite in 2023. I then bought another Switch in 2024 to replace my Switch Lite. And I love your Switch journey because what other console has inspired people to buy so many different mm-hmm. maybe versions or variants than the Switch. Like, because oh. it's got the portable thing going for it, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just people view it differently. Like, we've all, we both had multiple Switches. Yeah, yeah. I think we both had three Switches, mm-hmm. um, you know, a regular Switch. I didn't do the red box upgrade. That's one I state that I did not mm-hmm. do. I did not do a red box upgrade. I, I stick, yeah. stuck on my original Switch, I guess the gray box or whatever mm-hmm. it is. I don't know if it's gray box or white box or whatever. I think my original what people Switch might have been red box. I don't remember when they did the red box Switch. I don't either. See, that's a good idea to tell when you got into it. Um, I, I got mine back when red box wasn't a thing. But the red box had better battery life. That was something I did not get into. Mm, 2019? No, you definitely didn't get it in 20 because you got yeah. yours in 2018. We could figure out, you know, when did the Smash Ultimate trailer come out? Yeah, because that's when you bought a Switch, was yeah. when the trailer for Smash Ultimate got announced. When Smash Ultimate was announced, Daniel was like, okay, fine, I'm buying a Switch. It was announced on November 1st, 2018. I probably bought mine before the end of the year. No, I think that's... It was announced. Oh, okay. It was released in February? Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I may have skewed all the way to a red box. What, when that did would the red, only be when like... Did, when did the red box come out? Um, August of 2019. No, you didn't no. wait. You didn't wait months after no. Smash came out. I got Smash on release, so yeah. yeah, I guess I didn't have a red box. No, you didn't. Glad we figured that out. So, um, yeah. But then you know, we got our OLEDs. Got OLEDs. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got you, OLED, a Switch Lite. No, you're leaving out the Switch Lite. We. Got, well, I was going to come back to it. Okay. Did I get that? I thought I got my Switch Lite. Switch after Lite. The OLED. No, Switch Lite came before OLED. Switch Lite okay. came out. Uh, you got a Switch Lite. I did not. Yeah. But I, you, s- you, I think you may you know, you know may have gotten your Switch Lite later because you you didn't get it at launch. You waited quite a while and you bought a used Switch Lite. I did. I bought a used Switch Lite. Um, I thought it was super cool. But then, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I guess it was before the OLED because I remember when the OLED came out, mm-hmm. eventually I was like, okay, I love the way the Switch Lite feels. But every time I play the OLED, I'm like, why am I not playing this? Right. Yeah. So that's when I ended up trading that switch light to randy so yeah we've both had the same switch light but mm-hmm. we've all we both had three switches between us we've never had a special edition switch no no but and that's the thing like there have been tons of special edition switches people are have bought multiple there mm-hmm. i don't hardly know anyone who has a switch who at least hasn't considered getting another switch in yeah. some way yeah 
And it's just, and it's also great because the Switch Lite plays a very different role than the regular Switch. If you have multiple people in your family, it can be great to have multiple. The way you can be playing multiple games at the same time, you can kind of have your own Switch, especially that Switch Lite. Yeah. It's fantastic. Switch Lite's great. It's great for kids. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have multiple kids, it seems like an obvious choice. Oh, yeah, definitely. To me. It's very affordable, you know, compared to like something like the PlayStation 5 or something. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised they never did an OLED Switch Lite. Yeah, that was always rumored that there was going to be an OLED Switch Lite. You know, mm -hmm. that was the big rumors, an OLED Switch Lite and a Switch Pro. Mm -hmm. We never got either of those things. Yeah. Maybe in an alternate universe, we got both. I think but, we probably did. But not in this one. All right, we got another comment here. This one's from J.I. Pillow, who said, one month before COVID shutdowns, saying they got their Switch then. Mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild got me through the first six months of working from home. And I'll tell you, this... Is, this was one of my favorite comments from this poll because thinking about Breath of the Wild getting you through something like very much touches home to me mm -hmm. because I definitely like when I was teaching in public schools, I did not I did not like my job and it was very a rough time for me. But the one thing I had during that was the Nintendo Switch and Breath of the Wild because I bought my Switch at pretty much as I started my job. Right. And so it was like my my thing, my outlet. And um, so that was huge for me. So Breath of the Wild definitely got me through some stuff too. But also, I think it's not just me, but like you, pretty much everyone I know, the Nintendo Switch got them through the beginning of the lockdowns and COVID, specifically with Animal Crossing. Yeah, everybody that we are like Switch friends with basically yeah. was playing Animal Crossing. And it seemed like the whole world was. Yeah. Our, and it was such a it was such a neat thing to feel like you were like, mm -hmm. you were together on this one thing, even though the whole world was telling everybody like you literally cannot be together. Yes, and we could visit know? each other's islands and hang out together. Mm -hmm. It really was like the perfect game at the perfect time. And the game was delayed. And I think about that sometimes. So like yeah. That game was supposed to be a holiday release. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to come out like four, five months before it actually did. And I think like, what if it hadn't got delayed? You know, it would have been such, the game would have been likely could have been almost dead by the point that it was, it got, eventually did get released. It definitely wouldn't have had this like moment. No. You know, like Animal Crossing, was it New Horizons? It What's was. What's it called? New... Yeah, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah. That game has like a place in history mm -hmm. that it probably wouldn't have had, you no. know, if it had come out when it initially was supposed to. No, and it was such a thing. Like, I remember us talking about it back in 2020. We were like, it's crazy to go on and see so many people of our friends online yeah. all together on the Switch. Mm -hmm. It was just so... It, we, there had never been a time before that was like it, and there was no time after that that mm -hmm. has happened again. No. It was only in that moment that yeah. everyone was playing the Switch. Everyone was playing Animal Crossing. Yeah, they really were. It, it was cool. Well. I mean, you could text, you know, we, I mean, I, we texted all our friends all the, I, I would text multiple people about like the prices on the stock market and yeah. like just all this, all this crazy bull crap, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, that, that was really cool, you know, and I really don't have any desire to play it now. But at the time, it was just the perfect game. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memories of games besides Animal Crossing? I mean, now obviously, Animal Crossing hit hit at the perfect time, and it was mm -hmm. a big game for everybody. But definitely, any other games that come to your mind as being you know ones that got you through? You know, like man, uh, not necessarily Switch games. Oh, okay. Um, you know the the game that I thought of because I I did I read your comment you know on that on that comment yeah saying, yeah talking about Breath of the Wild. And, you know, one game that kind of comes to mind for me that I wasn't necessarily working a new job or anything like that, but I remember, I don't, I, I can't even remember the details of exactly what was going on, but I remember like, I wasn't exactly in the best headspace mm -hmm. when I was playing Chrono Trigger. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And I loved Chrono Trigger so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I do kind of regard it as one of those games that just kind of, it was a nice distraction. And, um... Games are just great for that. You know, I didn't even play that on Switch. Because you can't. No, you can't play Chrono Trigger on Switch at all, I guess, right? They've not released it at all. That's nope. wild. They should. What a missed opportunity. <clears throat> Maybe they've been planning on doing this remake and they just haven't been able to get it out in time. Yeah. Uh, they, I don't know. That's a, that's insane to me that mm -hmm. you can't even, like, access it at all on the Switch. It, 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 is, it is literally my favorite game of all time. 
And it's crazy to me that it can't be on the damn Switch. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's on the internet. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got one more comment relating to when people got their Nintendo Switches. Uh, hit us with this one from KDB, Danny boy. KDB QR9JH said, that, that freaking rolled off the tongue, said, I had to wait two years after release to get one, and it was definitely worth it. Sadly, I lost it to a, a crazy taxi <laughs> a couple months later, got a new one, and now currently have an OLED. And all I have to say is, thank God for that taxi, because now you have an OLED. Yeah, I mean, like... Who knows? You may may have just stuck with your original Switch if you hadn't lost it in that taxi. God, I mean, misery and woe. <laughs> I would think about how disappointed you'd be if you lost a, your your gaming console in a taxi. Ooh. I would be pissed. Yeah. I would be scouring yeah. the area for that taxi. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just Velcro an air tag to it. Well, before we move on to the next topic, if you. Uh, if you guys are watching this on the YouTube version, make sure to leave us a comment. Let us know when you got your Switch, if you have any great Switch memories. Yeah. You know, I love reading that kind of stuff because the Switch is my favorite console of all time. Mm, mine too. And it just, it, it warms my heart to know that, you know, other people have been affected by it in the same way that I have. Yeah. You know, positively, obviously. I agree. I <laughs> Maybe love... you have a negative experience with Switch. Tell us that too, you know? because th there are people who don't like the Switch. Maybe you never got a grip and your thumbs fell off. That, that very light happen. that could have happened. Yeah, I'm happen. pretty sure I would have arthritis if I didn't buy a switch a switch grip or something. The like, switch grip, man, is a game changer. It is a freaking game Once changer. Once you get one, you can't go back. So unless you don't want to go back, don't get one. Because if yeah. you get one, you're never going to play your switch without it. Never. And why would you? Uh, we're not sponsored at all. But you need to go buy a damn satisfy grip. The satisfy is my favorite. Um, there are many options out there, and I've you've tried a number of them, and I've tried mm -hmm. them through you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've tried the going, Skull and Co is the other one that I that I tried that I really like, and it's yeah. excellent. But the satisfy is so much better. Yeah, the satisfy is the way to go, and um, I like the split pad. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a pretty decent choice. The benefit of that is you get big sticks, which yeah. some people really really like. But yep. to me, it's still not as good as. Well, you Did miss you... out on you miss out on the HD Rumble and you miss out on the gyro, mm -hmm. and you know the gyro especially I really like so the you know that's why I kind of moved from this the split pad but. and and the split pad is very light and it, it feels a little cheap. I mean the sticks don't really feel cheap, the buttons don't really feel cheap, but the it's just not the weighty. unit in itself is very light and it just feels kind of cheap. It literally weighs negative yeah. weight. I, I still think Nintendo missed out an opportunity of making an official like split pro controller. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. Why did they not do that? Why? I don't know. Why didn't you do that? Like, it would have been great. What is wrong with them? And they probably could have charged a premium for it. It would have been more expensive than a regular Pro Controller for sure. Oh, they could have charged like 80 yeah. bucks for that thing. Yeah. Like, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'd, have, I'd write them a check right now. I, don't, I mean, I don't really need it. I don't know how much it costs for two Joy-Con. It's probably not far off from 80 bucks. Probably not. You. They might have charged 100 bucks for that split Pro Controller. They probably could have. 